So I went to my preacher, and I told my preacher, who happened to be Brother Dick Webster. We was in Goshen, Indiana, and I went to my preacher, and I said, Preacher, I'm going to Bible college. God's called me to preach, and I'm going to Bible college. And he said, what are you going to do about smoking? I said, you're not supposed to know I still smoke. <laughs> I said, I'm going to quit. He said, okay. That's all he said, okay. I had physical withdrawal on the way from Goshen, Indiana to Springfield, Missouri to the place that I almost tore the wheel off the, steer the steering wheel off the pickup I was driving. And it rained. The entire trip and everything we owned got soaked. God, why? Ah! And God said, trust me, it'll get better. About six months while I was in Bible college, I had, had quit and didn't pick up another one. I was at work, and I was welding, and I raised my hood and turned around, and on a sawhorse behind me was a freshly lit cigarette, my brand. And I turned around and looked at that cigarette. I'm looking all around, find, trying to figure out who in the world would have put that there, playing games with me. And God said, what are you going to do with it? And I said, I turned from my wicked ways, Lord. I didn't even touch it. I just hit the bench. It went to the floor, and I put it out. Somebody says, you ever have that urge? Oh, trust me. I'm like the guy that goes to bed at night and wakes up the next morning dreaming he ate a giant marshmallow and his pillow's gone. I used to go, I used to go to sleep at night and dream about them things. And get up the next morning, fall on my face before God and thank him that I wasn't still smoking. Slapped my shirt pocket so many times I like to wore the pocket out. But can I tell you something? When I got to the place and I laid them down, I didn't pick them up again. He said, turn from your wicked way. I, that don't mean turn for a little while and go back to it. It's turn from it. We need to humble ourselves. We need to pray. We need to turn from our wicked ways. I got one more, and I'm going to quit. I'm already a little, little behind. Got one more. Let me tell you what's going to happen when that, when, when that happens. When we get to the place that we see the, we see the need, and we're willing to have revival start with us. And we humble ourselves and we pray and we seek the face of God and we turn from our way, wicked ways with repentance. I'll tell you what's going to happen. God's going to acknowledge our prayers. According to 2 Corinthians 7.15. He said, I'll hear their prayer. He said, now mine eyes shall be opened and mine ears attended unto their prayer that is made in this place. He said, when it comes to the place that we start having reordered revival, God's going to hear our prayer. We're praying for people to get saved. We're going to see people saved. We're praying that people are going to come and join the church. We're going to see people walk the aisle and join the church. We're going to see baptismal water stirred. We're going to be seeing a revival happening. Why? Because we prayed earnestly and, and, and done what God said we needed to do and let God hear and answer our prayer. But he won't and will not until we get to that place. He said, I'll hear their prayer. He heard Daniel's prayer. And it wasn't overnight. Daniel prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. And, prayed and it came when Darius, when the, when the Medes and the Persians took over. And Darius became, became king. I believe it was Darius, who came back and said, you know what? I've heard about this temple in Jerusalem. I think we need to send some Jews back to rebuild the temple of, of the God of the Jews. And so he got all the Jews together and says, everybody wants to go home? Go home. Rebuild the temple. I'm going to send you and give you a job. Go rebuild the temple of God. You know what? The majority of those Jews stayed in Babylon. But a few of them, a remnant went back, and they rebuilt the temple of God. 
And it all started with Daniel. I'll hear their prayer. He said, I'll hear, I'll hear their prayers. He said, not only that, he said, I'm going to come to the place that I'm going to sanctify my house again. I'm going to come to the place that I'm going to make the, my house, God's church, the place where he's put his name, I'm going to make it something again. <laughs> I don't know about you. But there's days I step out that front door of the parsonage back there and I look at this facility and I thank God that he gave me the opportunity to be here these 19 plus years. What a, what a, what a blessing it is. Gone through some heydays, gone through some valleys. But can I tell you something? I believe that the best is yet to come. I believe there's nothing that this church cannot do if we get serious about revival. God will sanctify this place again to where people will flock here to hear the gospel. Not just hear me. Now, trust me. We've got some really good preachers. We've got Brother Mark and Dr. Smith and Caleb. We got to put Caleb up here one night. He did YouTube. and My son told me, he says, you got to let that boy preach more often. I thought, uh-oh, we done messed up. But it's not a popularity contest. All it is is just preaching the word of God. And we got some great preachers. In fact, we got some laymen out there that can preach. Amen. I've heard Jeff pray. And if Jeff can pray that way, he can preach that way. Amen. I've heard Jimmy Don pray. I've heard Jimmy Don speak. And Jimmy Don can tear the hide off those pews. Can I tell you something? That same thing with, with Larry. Some of these other men. I didn't leave you out, Joe. I'm sorry. How could I leave that you out? You just fill up that whole side over there. But we got some great men, some great men of God. And can I tell you something? We've got just as many, if not more, great women of God. God made the man of the head of the house, and he made woman the helpmate to turn the head. Amen. But nothing's going to happen until we get serious with God. Stand with me, please. Head bowed, eyes closed, no one looking about.